One, two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception. Where we stand in space and time. There is no you or me that I can see. Only delusions of the mind. Welcome back to Soul Perspectives. I'm Kip. And I'm Evan. And today we're going to talk about the true liberating power of acceptance. Ah, acceptance. What a beautiful thing. I hear a lot of motivational speakers, self-help gurus, and the like, talking about cultivating gratitude and what a magical power that is. And if we just focus on the gratitude, then that's the panacea. That'll help us get over everything else. And for me... I find that there's one greater, there's one step further that we can go to really let go of all the negative emotions about things, and that is acceptance. Because once we truly accept what is for exactly what it is, exactly as it is, and that we've made peace with it because we allow it to just be, there are no bad feelings left to experience. (laughs) In in fact, it seems that acceptance actually precedes gratitude because once you've moved into acceptance, how can you not be grateful? Mm. There's nothing that you're not accepting of. There's nothing you're not open to. There's nothing you're not understanding of. Then it makes it real easy to be grateful when you haven't found acceptance. That's a little bit of a challenge. And uh, who wouldn't be grateful when they realize, oh, I, my bad feelings are gone. I don't feel resentment. I don't feel frustration. I don't feel confusion. I don't feel doubt. I don't feel hopelessness. I don't feel isolation. I'm going to be grateful <laughs> that I don't feel those things. And when I feel harmony, flow, collaboration, unity... I'm going to be grateful just for feeling those things. And then I'm going to be grateful for the external stimuli who are contributing to those feelings of harmony, of collaboration, of unity. And, and, you know, and and acceptance, we, I I think we perceive of acceptance as something like I'm, I'm going to accept what somebody else does or who somebody else is. And yes, that's part of it. But acceptance is so much more than that. It's really about accepting everything as perfect, just as it is. Moving to that absolute kind of acceptance mm-hmm. where, where you realize you've released yourself from control. By releasing your self-control, you release yourself from resistance. By releasing yourself from resistance, you can then enter flow. But it's, it's a universal acceptance. and an acceptance that we don't know. It's an acceptance that we can't ever know. It's an acceptance that what we are right now is absolutely what we are supposed to be. And there's a difference between accepting what is and getting done what we need to get done, too. There's that whole give me the serenity to accept the things I can't change, the courage to change the things I can, and, of course, the wisdom to know the difference. And and it it all lies in that third part, the wisdom to know the difference. And so we recognize, okay, this is perfect. It is what it is. I can't change it. I'm going to allow it. But I'm still going to make my choices for myself about what I need to do. So in terms of, let's take, for example, like allowing toxic people into your life or into a situation or engaging with them or, or participating with them or collaborating with them, we still get to choose our collaboration partners. We get to check our, our vibe and our resonance and determine who seems to, to vibe with us, who seems compatible, with whom do we have workable, harmonious chemistry. And so... If we don't have that with someone, we can still completely accept them as they are. They are perfect as they are. We can allow them to be exactly what they are. And we can still make that choice that, okay, that's probably not the most compatible working partner with whom to collaborate. That's all okay. But there's a difference, you know, because a lot of people will doubt, which is fear again. They're not accepting us as perfect, us as what we're saying is valid, which is fine. We don't need that because we accept that. But when we look at that and we determine, oh, wait, I'm going to dispute that and find holes in what we're saying. No, because if you allow, accept everything, then you're going to end up working with people you don't like or aren't compatible with. And I'm just trying to offer that we can allow something to be what it is. We can accept it as and acknowledge it as perfect and still have the wisdom to know the difference of with whom we're going to be compatible, with whom we have good chemistry, with whom the vibe is obviously in flow and we're going to be at our peak, our most productive, our least resentful, and our most accepting. But you said a key word there, wisdom. And really what we're talking about is when you're in, um, 
resistance and not acceptance, when you're in judgment, that's all fear-based thinking. We're talking about love awareness. That's what acceptance really is. Um, you know, and Buddha had a great quote. I, I love to talk about acceptance. Is before enlightenment, one, or we could say before acceptance, one chops wood and carries water. After acceptance, one chops wood and carries water. What's changed? The resistance. The acceptance that I'm chopping wood and carrying water. Mm. This is what I'm doing. And to everything you just said, yes, acceptance frees us. Okay, this is not the person that I'm meant to have in my life right now. Everything t turns into acceptance. Nothing has to be uh, experienced as resistance. And I just got a new quote for the book, Secret Wisdom of Love. <coughs> Excuse me. Acceptance is the antidote to resistance. Love it. You know? Love it. Love it. And so we were talking the other day on Monday Minute Live about understanding being the antidote to judgment. Mm -hmm. We are so conditioned to, to judge everything that we experience, everything that comes across our radar, we judge it. And we need to do that to a certain extent to determine relevance, to determine uh, a fit, to determine value, to determine priorities. But we can get easily caught up in that hyper judging of everything and the hyper dismissal of everything. Nothing fits, nothing's good enough. And this is all part of that mechanism. As we recognize that we're hyper judgmental, then we can catch ourselves, curb that propensity, that urge, and that habit, and seek to understand, make inquiries, ask questions, delve deeper, seek to understand what is this thing, understand ourselves, why am I so resistant to it, etc. And once we do, those will lead us, those are tools that will lead us on this pathway to true acceptance. That is so key what you just said, I, um, when you're talking about it, it starts with ourselves. So we can talk about this infinite kind of acceptance, it's acceptance of infinity itself, but that, even that acceptance has to start with an acceptance of self, a love of self. You have to start with that. Are you accepting yourself? Can I look in the mirror? Do I accept all my foibles, flaws, everything as being perfect right now, as being the best me that I can be? And maybe I'm going to strive to be better, but I'm accepting and loving of myself no matter what I'm seeing in that mirror right now. Because I realize that at the end of the day, that's not really me at all. Mm -hmm. And I accept that. The acceptance is so key because we, without the acceptance, all we have is the resistance. And we somehow have gotten into this mode, it's been embedded in us culturally, to not be accepting of who we are, not being accepting of our past, being ashamed to admit things, Shame even self. to ourselves, even lying to ourselves. And I can understand wanting to protect a reputation, being rather circumspect about how much we share and what aspects of we share, what you know, demons we have or skeletons in our closet that we, we openly admit. We don't all, we're not saying, oh, come clean about everything, admit everything. There is, there is a certain amount of reputation control that we that we do because we live in societies because everyone else is going to be hyper judgmental but there is i think great power in acknowledging for ourselves one of the most powerful things that i've done in my life actually it was so cathartic and catharsis means a release of our demons i i actually made a list I went deep into my memory and thought of everything I've ever done that I thought was, was a compromise to my value system, a lie I had told or taken a little more than my share or something or harmed something unnecessarily, whatever it was. And I own it. I own it absolutely. I'm not going to tell you all about all of it because I still have a reputation to protect, right? But at the same time, not lying to myself and knowing that that is me. Those are all a part of me. And that is what leads me to be able to accept myself as I am and recognize I am perfect with all of those things, those foibles and flaws and faults and compromises to my value system that I've committed, we could Personal say. hypocrisies. Yeah, there aren't any anymore because, no, that's me. That's all part of me. I'm a complex being who was programmed into a complex society, who has had my emotions tapped into by very powerful forces out there. And that's all just part of the mix. I was raised with the parents I was raised with, the siblings I was raised with, and the environment I was raised with. I accept that 
because those all contributed to the choices I made as well. It wasn't all only 100% me. We're a product of our environment. Another really important point that uh, one of my great heroes, Jacques Fresco, talked about constantly that we are a, a product of our environment and that our behavior is the result of things that were normalized that we witnessed. You know, without going too far afield, but it would be beautiful, and I think we can get there, to live in a world of radical acceptance where we can be open, where we don't have to ha be ashamed mm -hmm. of anything. There was a series on um, Netflix I mentioned to you in the past called Sense8, and it's about another species of human who they didn't, they weren't, communicating through written and spoken word. They were communicating through literally inhabiting one another and sharing the experience, so you had to have this openness. And now the interesting part of the story was that they said, well, the written and spoken word must have been the superior way to communicate. It's the, it's the species that went on. They said it would appear that way, but what did that give the people to do that the people communicated the other way couldn't do? Gave us the ability to lie. Mm -hmm. And one of, and, and I, I want, still keeping on acceptance, but I do, because we mentioned shame. Shame is such a horrific emotion. In, in, in mm -hmm. South America, Peru specifically, when women go through menopause, the word is synonymous with shame and they experience it as hot flies. It's real miserable that what they go through. In Japan, they consider it the second spring. It's not experienced mm. the same way at all. This is what acceptance does to us. Yes, it's good to learn from your past, look at it as, as a piece of history. Not gonna do that again. Don't let it turn into regret. Don't let it turn into shame. It's those, it will not help you grow. It will only destroy you. Well, shame clearly represents a lack of acceptance. Yep. I'm ashamed of that. I don't accept that that was me and that that was appropriate and that I can live with myself knowing that I did that. Well, I can live with myself knowing I've done anything and everything I've done because I accept that that is just who I am and what, what I've done. It's, I accept it as the truth, as the reality. I think we get into real challenges when we start denying realities that we know in our heart are true and then we're trying to deny them on the surface. It's one thing to lie to someone else to, to save face or protect a reputation, but it's another to lie to ourselves. And for me, I try to do as little lying to the others as I can, but at least be honest in my heart with myself. And then I just know when to you know try and keep a lid on uh, and get a handle on when to speak and when to just be and, mm -hmm. and at the end of this all what we're really sharing here is expand your perception of what acceptance acceptance is to the reality of love itself you're you're you literally the you'll think you've expanded to a certain point and you go oh my god i've got another breakthrough your ability to ex ex accept is as limitless as your beingness itself mm. And expansion is infinite as well. Yeah. And, and it's all a matter of perception. We thank you so much for joining us here on Soul Perspectives. We're here every Thursday with a new show for you, you know. We love doing it. We love you. We're so grateful you've joined us. And come to Soul Documentary. Love. Love us, because we're going to love you back. It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time